Hello friends, let me show you how you can control phases inside of Stable Diffusion. You can have an input like this and output results like this and this and this and this. You know how it goes with the control nets and this and this. Let me show you exactly how it works. And I got a couple of tricks up my sleeve to make sure that it's going to work out well for you. Let's get started. By the way, do you know what kind of flowers grow on your face? Tulips. If you're new here and uh, need to install Control Net, check my previous video on that. I'm also going to link it in the top right corner right now if you're on computer. If you're on mobile, you're probably going to have to check it in the video description. All right, so I've loaded up Stable Fusion here. I'm going to drop an image into Control Net here, which is an, uh, a woman shouting that I just now generated. And we're going to enable control nets. We're going to set the preprocessor here. There are a couple to choose from when it comes to the face and getting the face to work. And let me, let me quickly show you. So you have the face here, the face only, potentially also the full, depending on, on your image. But for this particular image, we're going to use the face and the face only. So let's start with the face. And let me show you. If you click allow preview here and press the little uh, explosion down here, you can see a preview of the preprocessor. So as you can see here, you have dots going outside on the outline of the face, on the mouth, the nose, and around the eyes. So here you can control the pose of a face. Now the difference between face and face only, now that is the little lines here. And that indicates well, the direction of the head and the upper torso or you know the, the shoulders here. So if I would set this to face only, for example, I would not get those lines. I would only get the face. And you might ask, well, what, what does that mean? What can I do with that? If you use this, then the body can take any shape around this face. If you have it at this, then the body is restricted to having this pose. It's a little depending on what you want. Now, if you're using full here, you would get the same result because it's basically a full body with the face. It really doesn't matter if you're using full or face if you just have a portrait. For the model here, you're going to want to use control version 1.1 and then here the open post. Now we are using Stable Diffusion 1.5 models and this is the correlating model in control net. There are 2.1 models out there so you can find those if you want to use a 2.1 model. For now we're just keeping the control weight at 1, the starting control step at 0 and ending control step at 1. So without making any real changes here I'm just going to type in woman. I'm using the deliberate model. I'm having no styles here. I'm going to generate four images. Now we got four images here. And three of them, the mouth is similar to the original. We have some messed up teeth, doesn't really matter. But this one here, a lot of people have been complaining about the, the face preprocessor and has been getting a lot of this. And now that I'm making a tutorial on this, you might say, wow, you're a terrible YouTuber, Seb. I don't want to learn to do this. I, I want to make it work. I got a couple of tricks for that. Let me just grab the seed here. We're pressing the little reuse seed here. So whenever we generate now, we're going to get the same results, but we're going to change something here. First thing you can do to fix something like this, if you encounter it, is you can add something like my negative styles. Those can be found in the description below. So if I generate again now, not only am I getting wildly better images, all of them are well, correct. Even the teeth are much better in all of them. As a first render, I would say they look pretty good. Now, if you don't want to mess with my styles or any other styles, your own styles or whatever, you don't actually have to either. There's another way to fix this. If you remove that, you can actually prompt it. So you had a woman with an open mouth in control net, but you didn't get it in the output. Then you could prompt it in like, say, woman shouting. Now we're still using the same seed here now, but hopefully we should now get four images with women with their mouth open like in the image here, because we've told the AI the woman is in fact shouting. So now it has like two inputs. It's a control net input where it says an open mouth and the text input where it says, okay, she's shouting. So all four images here are much better than what we had originally. And now if you combine the woman shouting here 
with, for example, a default negative. We're going to add the digital oil painting and perhaps even a skin enhancer here. And then we're just going to weight this up a little bit. So now if we run this again, four images where all the women are shouting, the mouth is open, similar to the control net. We have the same pose, everything, and we're getting images that are more in line of what you would want or expect from a model like deliberate so this is more similar to well the actual input because i used these styles to create that input and as you can see the face are all having the same pose the head is leaning in a similar direction and all of them the shoulders are kind of lined up. It's a little higher here on the right side and, and all of them. So it's keeping the control net pose and the face pose exactly as intended. So that's uh, super good, super great. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now, if you would change this to the open pose face only model, like we talked about earlier, removing everything that has to do with the body. So now Stable Fusion can create the body or basically anywhere. It's going to create it obviously under here because that's where the body is compared to a face. However, we're going to see a lot of changes in the shoulders compared to our previous images where the shoulders were a little higher on the right side. Now we can see here it's actually the other way around. Now the shoulders are high on the left side in actually all our images because it is now adapted to the face and the head position. And just looking at these from a first render, this is a low res 512 by 512. This is before any image to image upscaling or in painting has been done. So we're getting some great results at this early step. Now you could continue in, in making the, these even better. I recommend you looking at one of my full workflow videos on that. I'm going to link one of them up in the right corner right now if you are on a computer. If not, you can just find it in my video description. I have now reset the seed to be random again. And we're generating four new images. And let's see if we can find one where the shoulders or the body is changing. And it seems like in this third one here and the fourth one, we're actually getting that. So as you can see here, the face are all lined up to the control net pose, but now the rest of the torso and the shoulders are, since that is not controlled by control net anymore, that is now randomly generated. So here, as you can clearly see here, the shoulder, the left shoulder is up here. The left shoulder is up, but she's more squared towards the camera. She's at an angle and here the right shoulder is up again. So this is a really cool way to control the faces and a super powerful one at that. Now let's say that you're looking for something like this, but you want some variations into it. And then I would change the ending control step here. Here it says we're going to start control step at zero and then we're going to run it for 14% of the full render. And that's what's happened here. You can see in the right one here and the right one here, we're very close to our original. As stable fusion generation is random, this one has started like the right one, ran for 14%, and then it decided from this sort of output, well, actually the, the control that we had previously, and then continue to recreate that into this. So it's skewing what we had. And it's the same in this one. There's a slight angle in these three. If we just look at them at a glance, you would say, oh, they're all similar, but they're actually angled much more different than the previous examples where we had control net from zero to 100%. So that's a cool way of working with control net and giving it a base to work with. And that could be a great way, for example, to let's say you want to do a troll man shouting. And if you would set that let's say let's even put it at rough troll man shouting and if you would render this zero to one which is would be a hundred percent of the render you would get something that's um, again following the style of the input these are angled all very similar and you can clearly see that they have sort of the same base now they're not 100 percent similar or the same, but very close. Now let's reuse that seed. And again, let's change this back to 
well, maybe 0.1, so we'll only run for 10%. So we might not even see the same pose in the end. So in all the examples here, we have the same sorta angle. You can see that it's, again, similar. But if you look closely, especially on the top right one here, where he's angled a lot to the right, and this one bottom left here, where he's much more angled towards the camera. So again, a very powerful way to give a little chaos or a little randomness back into your generation. Perhaps you have an input that isn't perfect, but just similar to the composition that you're looking for. Now, if you have a full character, let's say we have this man walking here, you're gonna want to be using open pose full if you want to use this particular type of face posing. Now, in theory, you can still use the canny or the depth map, etc., for faces also. But I've found that the open pose is particularly powerful, especially when you want to change the style. We don't have to remake this into a man walking. It could be anything. We're going to enable and we're going to change into the open pose model. And you can see here in our preview, we have the face, we have the body, and we even have the hands down here. So it actually does hands fairly well now it's a little small and far away but it um when the hands are a little bigger and up you know like this it works pretty okay so let's have astronaut on the moon i'm gonna put our default negative the digital painting in and we're running this for four batches now i might have made a mistake here writing astronaut because in most of our images we can't see the face at all but in this one here and this one here we can actually see that it is uh, leaning towards the right obviously this isn't a good face but that's not what we're looking for at this stage now, when the character is far out like this, faces tend to be screwed up a bit by stable fusion. Let me change this to something else so we don't have to mess with uh, the vice or the helmet here. We're going to do woman viking warrior instead. And again, as you can see in the images, the pose is well, pretty good in all of them, but the faces are messed up. We have four messed up faces. So let's take the, let's take the third one here. Send that to in painting. We're gonna paint on the face here. We're gonna say woman face. Make sure that you have masked content original, which is basically saying that we're gonna take what's below here and use that. Let the noise would fill with new material. So keep original and make sure that this is only masked. It's usually set at the whole picture. So click in only mask and about 0.6 denoising. More if you're looking for more changes. And as you can see here in our results, we have four new faces that aren't messed up anymore. Now you can do this even better by sending the original image into image to image, upscaling and then in painting. But again, check my workflow tutorials on that. So this was a quick look at the different options that are available for open post face for faces in um, the control net 1.1 models. Now there is another one available from media pipe which is media pipe face here and this is a separate one and it's actually i believe it's from a different uh, i'm not sure if i want to say company but the different developers at least and then you're going to load the media pipe face here i'm going to link this in the description below now i do think the original works just fine but this has some strengths that the other one doesn't you can see clearly here that Instead of all the dots that we were getting before, now we have a little more detail around the eyes, the eyebrows and the mouth here. So let's go back and take our woman shouting and quickly looking at these at a glance. They're fairly similar to what we had in the control net 1.1 face models. But you're going to have to test for yourself, see what works best for your use case. Like I said, it adds a little more detail, especially around the eyes and, and the eyebrows here. So at least now you have options to choose from. And, and that's great, because if one thing doesn't work out for you, you can try the other and, and vice versa. I hope this little explanation helped you. Like and subscribe if you wanna, but I'm not your boss, so do whatever you want. Thanks for watching. As always, have a good one. See ya.